Today we're going to be talking about alt art chase cards from all of the sets from Sword and Shield up to current with Scarlet and Violet with the prices that are going on. Should you be selling? Should you be holding? What's going to happen next? We're going to kind of talk about all of that in this video. We're going to go through a few of the cards individually. We'll look at the charts. We'll check everything out. Let's just jump in right here. First off with one of my favorite cards of all time, the Charizard V from Brilliant Stars. And what I want you guys to take note of is this chart. This is the three month chart from TCG player. And we had our big run up, right? And this card peaked at around just under $200 and then it's down to around 175 here. Now you're gonna notice that this is a recurring pattern and just because a card dips, you know, a lot of the times people will panic sell. Uh, they'll panic sell stocks, they'll panic sell cards, they'll anything, right? Because depending on when they bought or it's just human emotion, price is going down, I need to sell before it tanks, right? And that's understandable, but what, what you guys want to do is you guys want to be smart about this. So let's go to the next card. So this is the Giratina. And you'll notice that the chart is very similar. It's not quite as drastic of a drop if you want to do a comparison, but it's the same shape, right? So we had our, uh, our run up here. In March, 270 all the way up into just under $500, and then it hasn't it hasn't ran down that much, and it's almost already starting to rebound a little bit. So commonly, what happens? You see this with uh, stocks as well. For growth, what you want to see is stair stepping. It's the, a lot of people consider that very healthy. You don't want to just huge rips because then there'll be huge retracements. You want to come up, come down, and it's a stair step effect up. This is pretty common, and this kind of shows strength. So that's just something to consider. So we're seeing it here with the Giratina. Now, that doesn't mean for 100% fact that this is going to stair step up again now. It could drop still a little bit. It just depends. But I don't see these cards dropping in the in the immediate future. Let's look at the Blaziken. Now, the Blaziken, once again, is maybe not the same exact pattern. But you can see, if we're, oops, sorry. if we pop back and forth here, if we're up and we're popping back and forth, it's a little bit different but it's pretty similar to the same shape, right? It had its run up 180 up to 400, and it might be a little bit more on its way down. It might be leveling off. Different cards, you know, sometimes act a little bit differently. It, it does depend. So, you know, just keep in mind that these charts are like, okay, and then we get to the Gengar, right? Does this chart look familiar now? Same thing again. We go 211 up into the 400s. We dip down and now we're in the 350s with a little rebound up. Now, could this mean that we are stair-stepping up to back to this price? Could be. Um, but my advice for you guys would be, um, for me personally, I'm not selling my big alt arts right now, right? Um, if I have multiple copies, a lot of these I'm not selling at all that I just have to hold long term to keep in my collection. But the ones that I do have, I'm not, I'm not selling these yet because... Same thing, if you if we pull up the chart for the booster boxes, uh, you're going to see pretty similar, for most boxes, you're going to see a similar chart, right? It's going to come up and it's going to come down. And the boxes are very steady, right? And I think that over time that this is going to continue to rise. Just my opinion. Um, it might take a while, but... And then if even if you want to look at the big, the big card of the whole set, right? The Umbreon. Same thing. It had its big run up. It was under 600, up to 950, and you know while it hasn't come down as much, 905, 900, uh, you're still seeing that pretty much that same chart. Even if we go back to the Charizard, now to the Umbreon, you know slightly different depending, obviously, but that doesn't mean this doesn't show weakness to me. This is the market. The market needs to cool off. You know the prices need to get. Uh, realized and justified uh, sometimes when they run up too fast they have to retrace a little so it's pretty common so this is kind of just the sword and shield section I just kind of wanted to touch on these are what I um, think are the biggest from sword and shield now we'll start getting into some scarlet and violet some newer stuff and we'll get into some brand new sets and it'll be um, a little interesting so next up we have the roaring moon which Kind of has a little bit different of a pattern, but it still has the similar at the end where it, it you know it spikes up and then it's tapering down a little. So similar, you know, fifty-seven up to around seventy dollars, and it's still pretty much at that seventy dollars. It's at sixty-nine dollars. So um, this is what's this is what's happening with Roaring Moon. Um, 
a lot of the people and the money they were moving into all these alt arts and boxes for sword and shield because rightfully so great sets great cards great art everything right and once these prices get to a certain point i've talked about this in other videos before i, I used a carousel analogy it's very uh cyclical right so the carousel is going to come around and some of these these chase cards and these boxes are going to get too expensive but then other things are going to and people are going to jump off right but then by the time that that comes back around right so with some of these dips you know that people are going to be back on them again right as other things rise then they go oh well this isn't that much more than that you know you can use how whatever analogy you want um so we're kind of seeing a lot of people jumping more onto scarlet and violet now uh, which some people were behind that trend, some people were ahead by a lot, you know. Uh, we'll take the Magikarp, for example. Now, this is a very different looking chart, but you can still see this general stair step thing in the 60s up to 100, then it dipped down below 100, and it came back up, and it dipped down, and now it's on another upswing, right? 120. So, this shows me that this is kind of where the money's at. People are more jumping into these. And um, for me personally, I'm going to use this as an example. This is how. Every card is different, that was what I was trying to say. Every chart is different, but specifically this Magikarp, this print run for Paldea was not very good. If you guys are familiar with it, you know that this card is very expensive in a 10, and it's hard to grade in a 10. So, and this is arguably, people are saying the best, if not the most popular set um, out of Scarlet and Violet so far. You can agree with that or not, that's up to you, but what that means is that this card's getting a lot of attention, and this card's running up right now, and with the print quality being what it is, and I would be extremely, extremely, extremely shocked if Paldea does not get a reprint, although it is possible that it doesn't, but I think it will, and it is extremely possible that in the reprint, the print quality is better, okay? So this card is going to be a lot more popular, or a lot more common, I should say, and in a lot better condition so this would be a card that i would be avoiding and i would be waiting for paldea as a set i'm that's my approach i'm gonna wait for the reprints i'll let for that price to come down and then i'll move in and if i miss the boat i miss the boat right i'm not gonna chase so that's kind of my mindset with it let's take a, a another look at a specialty set now from 151 so this is the the charizard obviously now this chart's this chart's really different. It's a lot more consistent. Like if we zoom out, if we zoom out a little, like let's see. Okay, so this is we can check the launch. You know, it was up to 130. It dipped down to 109, 130, one. You're right, and it it's kind of been a little steadily going down. But it's a bit more consistent in the price range, especially in this last three months. You know, so right now we're seeing another uh, downturn, and this shows just um, what this shows is a lot of stability, and um, that it is the market is accepting this price point. While there obviously are fluctuations, it's pretty consistently in this window. It's kind of bouncing between a little window, and what's interesting about this card, kind of the same thing. Um, I, I don't the print quality is not nearly as bad or anything like that but this set is extremely likely to get a reprint so keep that in mind I'm not saying that this card isn't worth picking up depending on what you want to do but if you're looking for a flip or you know want to make a little bit of money i'd probably wait for the reprint because i think that more cards are of this are going to be coming into the market and we're going to see more of a of a of a dive that's what reprints do they tank they tank the singles price they tank the box price they tank everything because it's supp supply and demand and they're introducing a bunch more supply so um albeit this is a very healthy card uh, i would probably be avoiding that um personally uh, or picking it up after the reprint kind of thing so um just keep that in mind this is, these are just my opinions i'm just trying to share them with you be a little transparent um next up this is uh, the paldean fates another specialty set um charizard this is a chase card um, a lot of people don't like this artwork. I, d I do personally. If you look at this chart, you know, once again, it's very different than what we were saw uh, seeing with uh, Sword and Shield. 120 or 119 down to 100, down to 114, down to 106. So it's been, a, once again, a little bit more consistent-ish in this 
rough price range like let's see what happens if we zoom out so yeah this is hasn't been out that long so it it introduced at 180 now I, what you guys are going to see as we're getting into these newer sets this is very common so this is why for new sets chase cards i don't i don't chase them at all for the most part there's sometimes there's ex exceptions to the rule i think but like 180 and then this is kind of slowly been trickling down to 103 so if you were buying in at 180 and you're at 103 you know that's that's just what happens with newer sets i mean we're not even at six months right this was what or we're we're getting close to six months now we're at where i guess we're pretty much at the six month point almost and so this is this is something very common if you guys aren't familiar new sets uh i got some other examples they pump up and then they usually tank so um just keep that in mind uh, that's once again supply and demand there's not as many out there when they first come out so and then there's more boxes being opened so just keep that in mind for uh, you know for the newer chase cards here's another one this one's been a little uh, interesting this one wasn't always the chase card for temporal now if you want to take a look here we can pull it back out to the six month now this kind of did it went from 50 to 76 then it went down to 50 now we're up to like a hundred and in the eighties now, right? So once again, this just kind of shows the the sporadicness of these newer sets. Uh, so still hasn't been out that long. So for this, I would once again, I'm gonna let these prices settle. That that's just my opinion. But I do think it's important to look at all of these charts, different time periods, and everything, and just kind of if you guys aren't familiar, familiarize yourself with kind of what happens. And it's just good to know, have this have this knowledge base. So that's kind of why I'm just touching on all these different ones. Then let's just look at the latest one right here, the Greninja. Uh, this came out of the gate at 150, and then it tanked down to 118. I thought we might see it tank down even more. I still think obviously it's going to tank back, tank down. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking between 80 and 100 for this card, um, leaning more towards the 80 is just kind of where I'd like to see it at personally. Uh, but you know, pull rates. The pull rates have seen been tough in the set, so that's going to play a factor. Um, then it shot up all the way up to 172, and now we're in the 160s. Although if you look over here, we did just see a sale at 135 for near mint copy and 150. So um, expect this this card to be coming back down again. Don't be chasing this. That, you know that's just my opinion. So that kind of covers the newer sets. Twilight's like brand new. What is it? May 15th on here. So keep that in mind that, that uh, th these are just good representations. I'm very visual. I like seeing the graphs as well. I think it helps me. Um, I did also want to talk about, uh, there's two more cards on this list. Uh, I got these last ones a little bit out of order. But this is the Miriam from Scarlet and Violet Base. I think this set is underrated. Um, it's not the strongest, but I do think it's underrated. And I did want to talk about this chart. Now this chart is doing that stair-stepping effect up. We we saw it down in the last three months down to 22. It came up to 30, then dipped back down up to 35, and now 34, right? So this card, in my opinion, should not be the chase card of the set. I thought that the Gardevoir was a better looking card, and we're going to talk about that card next. But you can see, once again, people are jumping in with these the chase card for this set, because currently this is the highest value, is super affordable. And albeit the pull rates on Scarlet and Violet are way better. It's easier to pull the SIRs and stuff. But if you can get the chase card of a set for 35 bucks, you're doing real good. So even though this is going into growth, you know, I um, I would say that this is a good pickup, like not chasing it per se, but I don't think you could go wrong at this price point. But the card I really wanted to talk about right here is the Gardevoir. I've been pretty vocal about this in a few um, a few videos. I pulled this card um, when I uh, when Scarlet and Violet first came out. But if you look at the chart right here, right on the corner, you know, 17 came up, and then it kind of it's this has been a little bit of a run for it, you know, up to the thirty dollars. And I think this is going to pass the Miriam, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but this is just another. Um, when you see this card in person, it's way it's way more beautiful and I like the story that it tells I like when the, the evolutions tell a story so I'm kind of a sucker for those but I just wanted to bring up um, the Gardevoir as an example of just another different type of chart now we don't know where this is leading this could come back down this could level off this could just keep running for a while I could see this running up 
and passing the Miriam and then having a dip back down, you know, kind of thing. But I think that this card, even at this price, is extremely undervalued. Gardevoir is a popular Pokemon. This is a amazing looking card. So um, I think that's going to do it for uh, most of Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet. I just wanted to kind of touch on all those, just get my thoughts out there, talk about what I thought about, you know, the charts and and what I would do. So hopefully that was informative for you guys. I know this is a little bit of a longer video and I kind of just went on and on and on, but I appreciate you guys for stopping by. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I, I'm usually getting back to almost everybody um, if I can. And yeah, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.